as I still focus on our theme for the year, transforming your life out of Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. From these passages of Scripture, we have this thought. Transforming faith is never partial. Transforming faith is never Deacon Derby partial. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. As a statement of argument, if you don't mind looking to the person to your left or right, looking them in the eyes, amen. And I need you to repeat these words because it's important uh, that they hear and believe you mean what you are saying, amen. Check your faith walk, amen. Transforming faith never, amen, is never partial. Check. Reverend Alexander? Yes, sir. Reverend Richardson? Check your faith walk. It's very important, church. I, I'm looking at me, too, all the time. Check, preacher, your faith walk. All oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place because it is important that we, we check it because those little ones, I want y'all to hear this. Those little ones, they are watching what we say and what we do. Many times they, they mimic us. They even say some of the things that we say. Oh, bless his name in here. You know, I often talk about my little granddaughter. She has a way of repeating words that she hears, and, and I often look at her when she says it. I look at her and say, spell it. <laughs> Amen, because, see, I want her to understand what she's saying. Amen? So since you couldn't spell it, I said, you stop using that word since you can't spell it. <laughs> oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. But she's only repeating what she heard. Now, the truth is, she was using it correctly. Oh, y'all missed that, didn't you? She was using the word correctly in the sentence that she stated, but she didn't know how to spell the word. Amen. And it's our job to make sure that she knows how to spell the word and understand exactly what she's saying. Now, this word partial speaks of that which is incomplete, Prejudice in favor, not total or general, when it's used as a synonym, it speaks of that which is unfinished, imperfect, limited, one-sided, unfair, and unjust. Well, when I, when I thought about Transforming faith, uh, it should never be particular in dealing with people. Oh, I wish I had a praying church here today. No, it, it should never be a one-sided affair. It should never be unjust. I said that because the, the God that we serve, amen, did not just leave us out of his plane. Oh, I wish they had a praying church here today. No, he, he, he was not just saving his son just for, amen, the righteous. However, I, I did hear the mind of God say these words, and the just shall live, y'all read that too, by faith. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in here. As a matter of fact, this, this statement in and of itself is so important, amen. It, it carries so much weight until that it was recorded five times in the Holy Writ. You, your correction was recorded four times in the Holy Writ. You'll find it in Romans 1 and 17. You'll find it in Galatians 3 and 11. You'll find it in Hebrew 10 and 38. 
And finally, you'll find it in Habakkuk 2 and 4. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Yes, in, in checking your faith walk, it requires more than just lip service. I need to say that one more time. When we check our faith walk, uh, John, it requires more than just, amen, a faith walk. I mean, lip service. Am I, am I right about that? All oh, bless the name of Jesus. You see, anyone can say that they have faith. But the faith without action is not faith at all. I wish, I'm going to help you today, amen, because I, I want you to see this. If you don't see nothing else, people don't mind going around and getting on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they don't mind being a part of the, of the crew. <laughs> Good God from Zion, amen. But, but a lot of times when they get on the bandwagon, they're part of the crew, they have no works. They have no application. They just say, I'm with them. Mm. You ever had anybody told you I'm with you? Mm -hmm. I, I, child, I believe in you. Amen. And, and in the process of you trying to do what you do, they're not even there to help. Oh, I wish I had a praying church in here today. A good God from Zion. I'm trying to help somebody because this thing goes both ways. Not only does it also go inside of them into the marital room where the husband and wife are together, amen, where they got to help one another and not always one doing one thing and the other one doing another. I got the wrong house in here today. I guess all of us single. <laughs> Good God from Zion in here. Oh, bless his name here. It, it, it must be uh, checked. In other words, our faith walk must be checked. If I tell Miss Griffin I love her, it needs to be more than just a sentence. Oh, I wish I had a praying check in here. There needs to be some action behind my words. Are y'all with me in here today? Mm -hmm. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. And, and, and what I'm saying is the, the action should not, once I do what I do, should not be looking for something in return. Oh, I'm going to help y'all today. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. You see, faith in the Christian realm should mean something to every believer. In that he and, and she is striving, amen, after the mastery as one running, amen, the race. Church, it, it's be, it becomes a, a sad commentary, amen, when our faith has just become a five-letter word. You see, I have never seen, amen, an invention made without someone believing. And, and, then, and then it comes down to the point to where there is tremendous amount of effort, tremendous amount of thought process, tremendous amount of planning in order to bring that invention to fruition. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. In other words, what I'm saying is that we need to stop just being a lip-serving Christian. Check your faith walk. Amen. This is not just a, a Sunday morning affair. I shouldn't be able just to see your faith in action on Sunday morning. Your faith in action ought to be seven days a week. Twenty Four hours a day. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. Because see, God is always monitoring your heart. He, he's always constantly looking at your heart. He, he hears what you say. That's why he tests us every now and then. I'm going to ask a question in here then. How, how many of you said that, for God I live and for God I die? Uh, how many of you made that statement out of your mouth? Don't raise your hand. Amen. And, and every now and then, God will test you just to see <laughs> if your faith is according to your word. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. Yes, it's time out for allowing music to give us an emotional high. I know I got the wrong church. Amen. It's time out for us allowing Music that get us all riled up and excited. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. You see, you see, you see, I've never seen music save anyone. I don't care how good uh, the gospel song is, but I, I've never seen it bring about salvation. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. But, but, but I do uh, understand that the Bible says in Romans 10 and 14, it says, how then shall, amen, they call on him in whom they have not heard and, and believe in? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And, and how shall they hear mm, without a preacher? You, you see, you see, you see, yeah, 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 the songs, amen, have a way of, of soothing the heart, but the, the word has a way of piercing the soul. I, I wish they had a prayer in church in here today, amen. See, the, the word knows how to get down into the joint and the marrow. Huh? Good God. The word knows how to divide asunder that which is good and that which is not good. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. See, see the word itself is, is not partial. No, 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 no. It's not partial because he, he made sure that he made sure that, that Christ, was when he died on the cross, that he didn't die just for the Jews only. Uh-huh. Amen. He, he also died for the Gentiles. And, in other words, he died for the unbeliever. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. That's twice important. It's important that, amen, uh, that transforming faith is never partial. Check your face. In the body, then, of our text, James writes to, amen, his audience concerning sin of respect of persons, sins concerning deed, sins concerning Amen. Unworking faith. Amen. That does not save mankind. Therefore, as Christians, you and I are related, amen, to the body of Christ. And, amen, and should stand with confidence serving, amen, with compassion. Church, it's, it's difficult at best, amen, uh, witnessing to the loss. Then for some of us, amen, to, to add insult to injury. Check your faith walk. Well then, in my first point, we find a question. And the question is, can faith save him? Here is an expression of true faith. In, amen, uh, rehearsing and looking at the text, amen, and responding to, amen, to this argument here that James is presenting. He, he now shifts when he says, uh, my brothers, what good is it if a man, amen, claims to have faith but have no works? You see, the importance here, amen, is not on the, the true nature of faith, but on Amen. The false claim of faith. It's the, the, uh, the in, illegitimate boast of, of faith which, amen, the writer condemned. In that a person, amen, boasts about being born again and, and never experience the new birth. This kind of faith is, is not good, amen, and, and there is no profit. There is no gain. This kind of faith is, is full of hot air and no walking at all. Yes, this kind of faith is, is like a leopard trying to change its spots. Church, this kind of faith, amen, saying one thing, amen, and your actions are doing another. Check this kind, amen, of faith, amen, cannot save. This, 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 that is, this is why the Lord, amen, wanted, amen, so much more for Peter to understand, amen, the meaning behind his statement. You remember when he told the Lord, he said, I'll lay down my life uh, for thy sake. Uh, oh, bless the name of Jesus. 
You'll find that reference, amen, in John 13 and 37b. You'll find prior to that, amen, we find that, amen, Peter, good God from Zion, was doing all he can to keep the Lord from going back to Jerusalem. Amen. But I, I'm so glad that the Lord wanted Peter to understand, amen, the words behind his statement. What did he mean by that? He will lay down his life for his sake. I, I told you earlier, the Lord will test you every now and then. <laughs> Oh, bless the name of Jesus. That is why when he came to him, after he had gotten up, he kept asking him, Peter, if you love me, he said, feed my sheep. He, he asked him three times, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. And then finally, after feed, Peter was so grieved that the Lord kept on asking him the question. He said, Peter, if you love me, then feed my lamb. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. Check your faith walk. And secondly then, transforming faith demonstrates its work. Transforming faith demonstrates its work. In verse 15, the writer talks about a person in physical need of food, a man in clothing. And, and lip service just says disregard to the basic needs of the person. Just go in peace uh, by wishing them well. All oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. When you read the second chapter of James, you will find that he deals with a whole lot of things in this chapter. He, he, he deals, amen, with, with, with a man, amen, that would come in who wearing godly apparel or fine clothing, the text says gay clothing, amen, meaning they were fine rags, they were clean clothing, but it also deals with a man who didn't have anything, one who was destitute, and, and when he visited your house, when he, when he came into your midst, you, you looked at the man that was well to do and told him to, to come over here and sit here, but, but the poor man, the one that was without anything, you told him to stand over there in the corner. In other words, you, you didn't want them to mess up your furniture. You, you, you only wanted them to keep that corner of the house smelling bad. Oh, y'all ain't said nothing today. See, see, James is talking to saved folks. He's talking to Christians who, amen, who was judging wrongfully. He, he was talking to those who had done appointed themselves as judge to, to judge mankind. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. And he was telling them that the faith that you're using, that kind of faith, amen, does not demonstrate the true work of God. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. That faith that you're demonstrating is one that is impartial, is one, is one, is one that is divisive. Amen. I'm talking to the church. Amen. I got to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You see, we shouldn't be at any point in our lives, amen, because somebody don't have what we don't have. How dare us look at them and, hmm, good God from Zion, laugh worse yet or turn our nose up at them because they don't have what we have. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I, I, I said now it, it's going to demonstrate itself, amen. You see, we said this morning what's in you. Uh, <laughs> gonna come out. Uh huh. Good God. So if you don't have the right faith application on the inside, then the wrong faith application gonna come up on the outside. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. I, I wish I had a praying church in here. You see, I don't see anybody in here laughing at those folks down, good God, in, in Louisiana who has now lost their homes. Oh. I don't see, I don't hear anybody talking about them and saying it was their fault. They should have, they, they should have, uh, should have made sure they got out. They didn't know it was going to flood. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. So, so therefore, from the standpoint of transforming faith, when it demonstrates its work, that's where we come in. We come in to aid and to assist those, amen, who are destitute, who are without. Oh, bless the name of Jesus in this place. I did say that we did need to check our faith. We need to make sure that if the person is hungry, we need to make sure that we feed them. 
You all do remember the story about a man that had left church one Sunday evening. And the Bible talks about this man being one who had fallen among thieves. But it also talked about some church folk that came and saw him laying half dead. But those church folks who, amen, were high up, as we would say, they were the preachers and the officers of the church. The Bible said those church folk, when they looked, they walked past him over on the other side. But then there came one who understood this application, who knew that faith, amen, demonstrates his work. That same one that saw him, the Bible said that he came and he used all that he had. He used all of the oil that he had. He used all of the wine that he had. He used his donkey, his mule, his, his riding device in order, good God from Zion. He used the only car he had back then in order to take care of this man and get him to a place where he can receive service. Yeah, yeah, he, he wasn't thinking about this man and how badly injured he was. He was more concerned about giving assistance. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. So that's why we must check our faith wall. Well, then, in closing, as we can continue throughout our faith walk, checking each and every day, we have answered the question, can faith save you? I want to give you something else to think about concerning this question. It takes a whole lot of work to believe he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I said that for a reason because I wanted you to be able to see that thief hanging upon the cross. There was no time for that thief to even render any kind of good works. But that thief had to be able to see something else in Christ more than just a man hanging upon the cross between two thieves. In other words, his faith muscles begin to believe that he was the son of the living God. And in doing so, he said, when thou enter and to thy kingdom, remember me. And we know the outcome of that. Christ told him this day, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. You see, the more you work out your faith, the more you, amen, and I are assured that God is not a man that he should lie. Well, then thirdly, let me give you my final point, and take my seat. I'd rather show you than tell you. And that's what James was saying here in this 18th verse. He says, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. That is to say, I am a firm believer of the action that speaks louder than words. Here James does not waste time pointing out the difference. Amen. For faith will speak for itself. Good God from Zion, bless the name of Jesus in this place. I heard a songwriter say, may the works I've done speak for me. The songwriter said, when I'm resting in my grave and there's nothing that can be saved, may the works I've done speak for me. Well, then Jesus said these words, in John 14 and 11. Believe me that I am in the Father 
and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. In other words, I hear James saying, I'd rather show you than talk about my faith. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. That's why the Bible teaches that you and I will know the tree by the fruit it bears. Good God from Zion. What I'm saying to you today, church, and that is, you don't have to tell anybody that you have been born again. Your faith ought to be able to show evidence that you are a child of the king. Good God from Zion. Somebody ought to be able to recognize the working of God in your life. Good God from Zion. That's why you don't have to tell folks I have faith. Well then, I said I'm a firm believer that action speaks louder than words. If you tell me that you got faith, I'm going to tell you I need you to show me your face. Good God from Zion, I know what I'm talking about. The Bible says that Christ came down 42 generations. Didn't he do it, y'all? The Bible says after he got here, he said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Good God from Zion, what Christ was doing was showing us what he believed in and what the Father had showed him. Good God from Zion, yes, he did. And I am I'm so glad that Christ showed me his faith in action. Good God from Zion, I'm glad that Christ showed me when the Bible says that a man should always pray and faint not. Good God from Zion, I'm glad he showed me I can pray until my sweat drip down like blood. Good God from Zion, I'm so glad that Christ showed me how to suffer. Good God from Zion, the Bible says he was like a lamb, dumb before his shields. Good God from Zion, I did say, check your faith. Good God from Zion, I told you at Bible study, Good God, I'm responsible uh, for this flock. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, good God from Zion. And if uh, somebody uh, threatens you, uh, they threaten my life uh, as well. Uh, good God from Zion. Uh, I'm like Christ. Uh, I'll tell them. You don't mind, let them leave, and I'll stay here. Good God from Zion, that's how Christ is. Yes, he is. I'm so glad that Christ took the time to be whipped all night. Friday night, yes, I am. He was showing me how to go through much pain and much agony. Good God from Zion, yes, he did. I'm so glad that Christ took that rugged cross upon his shoulder at a time when he really could not stand. Good God from Zion, he was showing me how uh, to persevere uh, through my trials uh, and tribulations. Uh, good God from Zion, uh, that's uh, checking uh, your faith. Uh, good God from Zion, I'm so glad uh, that that action uh, calls another uh, to step in uh, and help him uh, all the way up uh, to God's heal. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, 
Simon checked his face. Good boy from Zion. He was able to aid Christ in his faith walk all the way up to God got the seals. Yes, he did. I'm so glad when Christ got up there. Good boy from Zion with a crown of thorns already pressed upon his head. Nail to an old rugged cross. I'm so glad when he got up there. Christ saw what we really need. He saw that faith had to be partial. Good God from Zion. He saw that faith needed to be that kind of faith, not one sided. He saw that faith needed to be just. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, good God from Zion. Uh, after a while, uh, Bible says, uh, from his feet walk, uh, bowed his head, uh, locks of his shoulder, uh, gave up the ghost. Uh, good God, uh, he died uh, Friday evening. Uh, took him down, uh, placed him in uh, a borrowed tomb. Uh, he didn't stay there uh, just a little while. Uh, on Friday night, uh, he laid there. Uh, I'm a toaster. Yes, he did. Saturday morning, he was still laying there. I'm a toaster. Yes, he was. Saturday at noonday, Willie, he was still laying there. I'm a toaster. Still wrapped up. Yes, he was. Good God from Zion. But after a while, before Sunday, morning came. For the sunrise, rooster crow, that same Christ. Face uh, got up uh, out of the grave. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, he checked uh, his faith. Uh, didn't he do it, y'all? Uh, good God from Zion. Uh, that same Christ, uh, Bible says, uh, one of these days uh, gonna come back. Uh, good God from Zion. Uh, you've been walking right. Uh, you've been talking right. Uh, you've been checking your faith. Uh, he gonna come back uh, with the trump. Uh, of God, uh, I can hear the trumpet uh, blowing so loud. Uh, after a while, uh, I can hear uh, the voice uh, of Christ uh, like an angel. Uh, good God from Zion. Uh, after a while, uh, all of us uh, that checked uh, our faith uh, in the moment, uh, in the twinkling uh, of an eye, uh, gonna be caught up. Uh, gonna be caught up. Uh, don't be caught up, don't be caught up. Good God from Zion, good God. Transforming face, it's never partial. Check your face walk. The doors of the church is open.